Happy Friday, everybody. We have almost made it to the weekend. We've still got work to do. Not there yet. In fact, for us here, it's going to be a busy day with all of our usual broadcast programming excellence and then the big one HE Eastmont football game tonight. We'll have it for you here on the NCW Live channel. It is the 16th day of September. I am Dan Coots, and look, you can see the valley. For the first time in about a week, you can see the valley. From the Wenatchee Heights, we're uh, done with this gunky air. We're in the 70s on the AQI scale. That means the air is moderate, but we're past that unhealthy for sensitive groups or unhealthy or hazardous or unfit to breathe. We'd like that. Took a long time. Still a little haze and a little smoke, but it's not everywhere now, so we're pretty much good to go. We're in for a breezy day today and a cool weekend. There's a um, cold front going to come in. From British Columbia, it's going to usher in some chilly air, some brisk winds this afternoon. Going to feel like autumn tonight and for the weekend. And then we warm up a little bit as we say goodbye to summer and welcome autumn. Uh, in a little less than a week, forecast details are coming up. A lot of news, a lot of sports, including we'll preview the Bridges Sportsmanship game tonight between the Panthers and the Wildcats and everything else that's happening in prep sports, college sports, professional sports, and hockey. We have a lot of that. In case you missed it on Monday, we're going to replay the interview I did with the interim superintendent of the Wenatchee School District, Bill Eagle, who's taken the job on a one-year contract through the North Central Educational Services District. Had a nice chat with Bill. You'll get to see that again in the back half of the program. If you haven't been outside yet, feels cool. 55 degrees outside of our studios, but right now in Freda, it's 48 in the 40s, and there'll be some places in our viewing area. You can see overnight lows in the 30s this weekend. Told you there was some cold air coming. Let's not waste any time. Let's take our tour around the valley in north central Washington. Again, this is our other cross camera, our east camera is what we call it. Yesterday at this time, you can barely make out the Wenatchee Valley, and it's a lot better right now. Again, everybody has moderate air, which means everything's good to go. And it should improve even better as the day progresses. Again, this cold front will uh, make things a tad breezy this afternoon. And tonight, more, uh, more details on that. It's also going to be very dry, very, very low relative humidity. And unfortunately, what we really need is some rain, and there's none of that in the forecast. So the, the fires uh, burning in the heavy, steep, dense timber is going to continue to smolder away until we get some significant rain there. Camber 2. Uh, boy, that looks to be the Lake Wenatchee area, or maybe Black Mountain. That's the Black Mountain camera, so we're, that's high above Peshastin. What direction we're looking at, I don't know. It looks probably due north. I think it's looking straight to the north. Uh, if we pan that thing about 45 degrees to the left, we would be able to see Leavenworth. So high atop Black Mountain, looking at uh, basically towards the Lake Wenatchee area. A few clouds up there. Camera number three. That's got to be the monitor camera or Stein. That's Stein. That's got to be Stein. Looking back towards, uh, looking back towards the upper valley, towards Dryden and Peshastin. Uh, pretty much done, I, I suppose, with most of the harvest. I suppose maybe the peaches are still hanging in there. We're heading into apples now, of course. Uh, you can see a little bit of Alala Canyon to your right. And finally, camera four. Ooh, it's moving there. Uh, Green's Knob. Up to uh, Lake Chelan, we go to the densely populated part of Lake Chelan. That is quite a ways from Chelan proper, heading up the lake. That's the Greens Knob camera as we head up towards the Holden Village and eventually Stehekin. And it looks like it might be a little breezy up there. We're supposed to see wind. Let me look at, Ch at Chelan right now. It's the southwest wind at 11. But again, this camera is quite a ways northwest of Chelan where they might have a little bit more breeze there. Pretty obvious. We're in for a warm start to autumn. Once we get through this weekend, this is from the Climate Prediction Center. As you can see, we have a very good chance uh, of having a warmer than average start to autumn. The autumnal equinox is next Thursday evening. That's when we say goodbye to summer and uh, welcome autumn. So it looks like uh, for the first week or so of autumn, we are going to see temperatures above normal, perhaps well above normal, and uh, very little, if any, precipitation in the forecast. It's going to feel more maybe summerish than autumnish. Uh, as we get to the middle to late part of next week. In the meantime, we have today to worry about, and it's going to be windy, quite breezy this afternoon and this evening. Uh, the places where the winds are going to be the strongest, probably the Waterville Plateau and us here in those little gaps through the canyons, number one and number two canyon, uh, the, 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 uh, the winds can channel in there pretty good and get blowing. So we're in for some windy conditions tonight. 
if you're going to the to the football game, be prepared for some gusty winds. And it's also ushering in, I mentioned it's a cold front, it's ushering in some cold air, uh, at least for the next 72 hours or so from the National Weather Service. We'll be up near 70, right around 71, 72. Uh, again, sunshine, which we haven't really had much. We would have had sunshine if it wasn't for the smoke over the last week or so, but no, we're going to have some sunshine today and a high of 72. Our normal high this time of the year is 77. Our normal high is gradually getting cooler. Overnight low tonight in the 40s. Been a long time since we've had overnight lows in the 40s. Much below normal on uh, Saturday, a good 10 degrees below normal. We'll be done with the wind, maybe a little bit of wind early Saturday morning, but really not much. We're only going to get to 67 degrees. It's going to feel like autumn. 53 for the overnight low on Saturday. Then we gradually warm up. You saw that slide earlier about the warming trend to the very last days of summer into the early days of autumn, and that's what we're going to have. Temperatures climbing to near normal to above normal by the time we get to Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week with lots of sunshine. Again, the story today is going to be the wind. The wind will be at its strongest between about 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock today. That's your weather forecast. It's six minutes after the hour, a one-minute break. And your Friday morning headlines, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. This could be the view out of your office window. North Central Washington is probably one of the most beautiful places to live and you get the experience at all as a transit operator. Link Transit coach operators enjoy full family benefits, paid CDL training, a state-of-the-art fleet, and the satisfaction of being part of a progressive, community-minded team. We have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, it's a good group of people. We're all kind of like a family. If you like this view, Link has a seat for you. The next operator training starts soon. Apply today at linktransit.com. Some thought it would never happen. The Supreme Court taking away a woman's right to choose. A right to privacy that existed for almost 50 years. It's extreme and dangerous. Now some DC politicians want to ban all abortions with no exceptions for rape, incest, or the life of the mother. As a doctor and mother, I am outraged. As your Congresswoman, I won't stand for it. I'm Kim Schreier and I approve this message because this fight is now. High clouds, still some residual haze, 57 degrees outside of our studios, uh, eight minutes after the hour. Lower 70s today, mid 60s tomorrow, lots of wind. Very breezy this afternoon and into the evening hours, right till just about sunset. Let's begin with this story. The driver of a pickup had to be transported to the hospital yesterday morning after a collision with a semi. This happened on Highway 97, just south of the BB Bridge. The accident closed the highway from just before 10 o'clock in the morning till a little afternoon. Yesterday, the Washington State Patrol said the pickup and semi were both southbound. The semi slowed down to make a left turn into a construction site. The pickup, making an improper pass on the left, and struck the fuel tank of the semi. The driver of the 2019 Nissan Frontier, 22-year-old Wyatt J. Dietrich of Arondo, suffered injuries from his seatbelt. He was transported to Lake Chelan Hospital. Trooper Colin Cum... Camaravel said about 30 gallons of fuel spilled from the semi's fuel tank. Firefighters and hazmat crews responded to the spill. By the way, Dietrich was cited for improper passing. In a classic case of good news, bad news, they got the North Cascades Highway reopened after a mudslide yesterday, but unfortunately, Highway 2, Stevens Pass, still closed and will remain closed at least through Monday. That's the mudslide on Highway 20. Which closed, uh, which closed the highway early Wednesday until they got the mud cleaned away. Uh, as far as uh, Stevens uh, Pass, Highway 2, of course, it's been shut down since last Saturday by the Bolt Creek Fire outside of Skycomish. WashDOT said a joint task force supporting the firefighting efforts who are going to reassess the highway on Monday. In addition to the danger of the fire burning right alongside the highway, several areas of the roadway have been covered by burned trees and debris. Moses Lake Police Officers, Grand County Sheriff's Deputies, K-9 Units, Drones. Everybody was out there searching unsuccessfully Tuesday afternoon for a wanted felon to Moses Lake, but they finally found him on Wednesday night in a bathroom stall. The Moses Lake Police Department had been seeking 38-year-old Modesto Valencio Aguilar on outstanding warrants for unlawful imprisonment and felony threats. Police said uh, he had been seen in a swamp Tuesday behind Makash Park. Searchers slogged through the muck, no luck there. 
Then Wednesday night, they received word he was in the area of the Moses Lake Multimodal Transit Center at 4th and Division Street, and it was there inside the restroom where they found him. The police department said one flush later, and Aguilar was in custody. Police say an employee at the Walmart here in Wenatchee cornered a janitorial worker in the store bathroom, groped her, and stole her cell phone. 22-year-old Eric Alvarado Reyes of East Wenatchee is charged with first-degree theft, fourth-degree assault with sexual motivation. The alleged victim told police Reyes entered the closed bathroom while she was cleaning it on Saturday morning. There, he allegedly asked for her contact information. She refused. Uh, he stole her phone from her pants pocket, and she said after she took the phone back, Reyes continued to harass her and seized her buttocks with both hands. The woman reported the incident to Wenatchee Police Saturday morning. Reyes was arrested later that day. He was released on Monday on a $1,000 bond. Raymond is on September 26th. Wenatchee Police found a stockpile of tools, and I mean a bunch of tools, Wednesday night after a, serving a search warrant on a hotel room believed to have been occupied by a burglary suspect. The Wenatchee Police Department said the suspect had earlier escaped after officers were unable to pursue his vehicle, but the vehicle was located at the hotel a short distance away. Police said probable cause was established to seize the suspect's truck and camper trailer, and police said after obtaining a search warrant, a, quote, plethora, unquote, of tools were found inside the room. The suspect remains at large. By the way, anybody who has been a victim of a recent theft of their tools, you can identify the tools. If you think they're yours, you're asked to contact the Wenatchee Police Department. And for 30 years, the annual Wenatchee River Salmon Festival uh, has been held, educated and entertained the kids at the Leavenworth Fish Hatchery. But this year, they're doing some renovations at the hatchery, so organizers decided to join the Salmon Fest with Chelan County PUD's River Ramble, which is another educational event focused on the ecology and the culture of the Columbia River. The combined event started yesterday at Rocky Reach Dam, wraps up today. Schools from across the region are busing kids in, as they always do. Uh, our very own Jefferson Robbins caught up with Corky Broadus and Kirsten Lodge to learn more. This is the 30th anniversary of the Wenatchee River Salmon Festival, and we are proud to have invited many, many schools from North Central Washington. We no. have nearly 1,500 kids coming out over the next two days from all over Washington State, and we're so thrilled to welcome them here at Rocky Reach Dam. I'm telling you, without the PUD, we wouldn't have been able to do it at all. And this is a marvelous partnership that we've had since the early 1990s. Um, I think it's enhanced it. It's also brought students to a place that, that is so special and, and to learn more about hydropower along with our tribes. It's, it's, it's a very valuable uh, program this year. In addition to this beautiful native encampment and salmon festival, they're getting to explore the dam at a generation station and they're getting to learn about our fish and wildlife team and habitat conservation in addition to the Discovery Center. It's really about connecting people with nature especially children right now and when they bring their families but it's also to to really share high quality natural resource hands-on education what could be and, better than an outdoor classroom yeah. right and and to help you know pr promote the local economy as well um, but salmon fest is really about that connection about half of our exhibitors and educators are here in the tribal encampment We've got a long tent and we have these traditional teepees set up where children go in and they hear from Native American educators storytelling. They learn about the history and heritage of the original people that lived here in this valley. And there's about 15 education stations in addition to exhibitors that are showing their, their talents and their crafts and artisans. And it's fun, it's edutainment, education and entertainment at its finest in the outdoors can't beat it. That's what's making news and this Friday we'll have a newscast for you tonight at 5, 6, and 10. Grant's got the day off. Jefferson will be in the anchor chair. I'll be handling weather or the forecast in any way. I don't have the power to handle the weather, although I am working on it. And at the bottom of your screen is the different ways you can get a hold of us when we come back. Sports, the obscure holiday. Today in history, some celebrity birthdays. A brand new opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. You've never seen it because we've never aired it. And my conversation with Bill Eagle, the interim superintendent of the Wenatchee School District. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel.
The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? Businesses and individuals have trusted the experienced professionals at Financial Alternatives for their retirement and investment needs for 40 years. They offer a broad range of investments, annuities, and insurance solutions for people and businesses throughout Washington. Financial Alternatives will assist you in making informed decisions for your future. Call Financial Alternatives today and meet with their advisors. Sixteen minutes after the hour, the Cross River Rivalry resumes tonight at East Wenatchee. It's the Wildcats and the Panthers, the Bridge of Sportsmanship game. Uh, Wenatchee leads the series since they started calling it the Bridge of Sportsmanship game 10-7. Eastmont has won the last six in a row, though Wild Coach Michael, Wildcat coach Michael Don says they don't really think about the rivalry much anymore. Early on, um, we probably talked about it more. And then as we got going, we kind of stopped worrying about the rivalry piece of it. Obviously, it's there, so we don't need to talk about it because it's something the kids think about naturally. But we just kind of focus on trying to get better this week and uh, make sure guys are focusing on what they have to do, not necessarily the matchup. And um, it's an easy game to get up for. Uh, we know they'll be up and excited. Their guys will be flying around. Last year, they punched us in the mouth in the first half. So um, we're, not, we're not looking past or we're not looking through anything. Um, we're focused on this week, these guys, um, and coming out and playing good football early. When Anchi's off to an 0-2 start, they were 1-9 last year. Coach Scott Devereaux says... The Panthers are just trying to get better. Uh, you try and keep them focused, you know, because come Friday, the emotion is going to come out anyway. So um, we talk about being focused all week, uh, doing your job, don't do too much. Um, and we had to have a good week of practice. You know, we, we did not have a good week of practice last week, and it showed. And um, so that was the focus. You know, we, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to do steps properly. Um, it's all it's all between years right now, and um, that was, that's all we really worked on. Panthers took an early three nothing lead at halftime before Eastmont pulled away to last year. Coach Michael Don says he's expecting almost anything from the Panthers. Yeah, you know they've always done a really good job of having stuff in their uh, their back pocket. I mean, a few years ago, um, they I think they hit us with like three fake punts in one game. Um, you know, when JJ Jelsing was a freshman, he running all over us doing that. And um, you know, they do a good job. They're well coached. Uh, they have a really good coaching staff. Um, defensively, I actually thought they played really well week one against Skyline um, and held Skyline, who's got three you know really good college football players as skill guys. Um, they did a really good job against them, so we know what they're capable of. Um, we got to get on them early, and not, you know, we got to we got to get out and get physical quickly um, because they got some good kids and they're well coached, and uh, you know, this is going to be a battle. Both teams are off to 0 and 2 starts. Remember, Eastmont finished second in the league uh, last year. Coach Scott Devereaux says his Panther roster is a tad thin. Well, we know we can play with them, you know. Our disadvantage is our numbers right now. Um, you know, we're we're a light, we're one injury away from um, not having enough linemen. You know, <laughs> putting in some really young kids, and and uh, that's not never good. You know, especially early in the season. So uh, we got to be tough. We got to play really tough because they don't have a lot of two-way guys. Right. You know, so they're not going to be as tired as we are. So we have to play smart and execute a good game plan and try and keep their offense off the field and. And uh, that's kind of our focus, you know. Last year we, we played them tough for a half and they made an adjustment the second half and we couldn't answer and, you know, they took it from us in that second half. So this year I expect it to be a tough, emotional, close game again. And we'll have the game for you here tonight live on the NCAA Live Channel 630 with the pregame show. Eric Granstrom, Paul Collard on the call. We'll have it also on our Facebook page and on our website. Other games of the Big Nine tonight. Moses Lake travels to Ike. West Valley will host Davis. Kennewick will visit Sunnyside. They all kick off at 7 o'clock. Carol Boutrell League play. Cashmere kicks off at 6 tonight. They're down at Walla Walla to take on College Place at 7. you got Quincy at Tenasket, Okanagan, and Omak. Chelan hosts Clay Elum and Cascade 
travels to Brewster. Early start in the Central Washington Beat League last night. Pomeroy beat Indiana and beat them bad. Waterville Mansfield fell to Welber Creston and other games tonight. It's Elmira Cooley Hartline visiting Liberty Bell. Bridgeport travels to Soap Lake. Manson has a unique opportunity. They're going to be in Cheney on the red carpet of Eastern Washington University to take on Priest River. That's tomorrow at 3 o'clock. In CWAC play, Prosser shut out Grandview last night. Tonight you got Heritage at East Valley, afraid of hosting Othello, and tomorrow it's Ellensburg at Sela. The Les Schwab Prep Girls soccer scoreboard from last night. Shalana Brewster, one all tie. Cashmere shut out Quincy. East Valley cruise past Cascade. Omac blasted Pateras. Sela shut down Afreda at Tenasket. Blank Kettle Falls. The schedule tomorrow at 10.30. You got Okanagan hosting Clay Ellen. That's awfully early for a soccer game. Quincy's at Warden at 11 at noon. It's Reardon and Brewster. And Tenasket at Davenport at 1 o'clock. It's Moses Lake at Eastmont. And Wenatchee's at Sunnyside. Cashmere will host Overlake at 2. It's Cascade at Liberty Bell. And we're going to have the Eastmont and Moses Lake game tomorrow at 1 o'clock with Sebastian Moraga on the call. Prep volleyball last night. Wenatchee is, remains undefeated, shutting out Sunnyside. Your other winners, Moses Lake over Eastmont, Chelan, Quincy, Annie at Liberty Bell, and Moses Lake Christian. One volleyball match tonight. Pateras visits Curlew at 5.30, and a bunch of local teams are going to be down in Yakima, the gateway to Wapato for the Sun Dome invite. Tomorrow, in the meantime, Republic plays at Tenasket. Eastmont will host Afreda, and Moses Lake travels to Hanford in volleyball. When you will host Eastmont in girls and boys cross country. That's tomorrow at Walla Walla Point Park and Moses Lake Swimmers. They'll be on the road in the Tri-Cities tomorrow morning to take on Kennewick. All right, where are we? The college football. There you go, Moses Lake, Kennewick, and the girls swim and dive. We'll jump ahead to the schedule. Central Washington is on the road. They'll take on Simon Fraser in British Columbia. The Cougars have a 2 o'clock kickoff at Martin Stadium against Colorado State. It's on the Pac-12 Network. Huskies take on number 11 Michigan State at 4.30 on ABC Eastern. Doesn't play anybody. Seahawks will try to make it 2-0. They're taking on the 40 Winers. San Francisco coming off a loss to Chicago. Seattle beat Denver, of course. An emotional day for the Seahawks. Yesterday, Jamal Adams placed on the injured list. He's going to miss the rest of the season with a knee injury. Coach Pete Carroll says it's tough to see such a great competitor get hurt. It means so much to him, and, and the, the frustration of having to go through, um, you know, not being healthy is, is just jumped at him again, and um, you know he's questioning and wondering and all that because he wants he wants to be out here so much. He wants to be with the guys and, and doing what we do and all every in every way you could possibly want to do that, and so it's it's really frustrating for him. Seattle and San Francisco, 1 o'clock Sunday on Fox. The M's begin a four-game series in Anaheim, taking on the Angels tonight. Robbie Ray will take the ball to keep Seattle in pace with Tampa Bay and Toronto in the wild card chase. First pitch, 638 on Route Sports Northwest. Houston, by the way, won for the 94th time yesterday. They beat Oakland 5-2. That was the only other American League West game. In the wild card, Tampa Bay beat Toronto, so the Blue Jays and the Mariners lead the Rays by half a game in the wild card chase. Chicago beat Cleveland. They're six and a half back. Minnesota beat Kansas City. They're seven and a half back. The Orioles are still there. Four and a half back as we hit 20 games before the end of the regular season. About 130 cars will be driving fast and turning left this weekend at the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. They'll practice today. And then they got the Jerry Burschauer 125 tomorrow for the Jerry's Auto Supply Pro Late Models. The Plum Perfect Roadrunners wrap up their season tomorrow. The Angel Bail Bonds Bandoleros. Gates open at 3, racing at 4 on Saturday. Then they do it all over again on Sunday. The Northwest Super Late Model Series. The Neil Newberry 125, the Wenatchee Legends Cup, the Dixie and Air Conditioning Thunder Cars. Gates open at noon on Sunday. Racing gets underway at 1.30. And the Wenatchee Wild continue their preseason. Three games over the next three games. They're in uh, three games over the next three days. They're in Sioux Falls tonight, Sioux City tomorrow, and then in Fargo on Sunday. And those are just some of the games that people are playing Whew. on this Friday. It had six obscure holidays to choose from. The holiday we're going to do is not obscure. Today is National Play-Doh Day. Today is National Cinnamon Raisin Day, Step Family Day, Working Parents Day, Tradesman Day. But it is the third Friday in September. That is National P-O-W-M-I-A Remembrance and Recognition Day. According to the Defense Department, this is a pretty good guess and they would know, there are approximately 81,900 Americans that are still missing in action from all of our wars overseas. 75% of those uh, MIAs or POWs, 75% of that 82,000 or so, uh, in the Southeast Pacific, either Vietnam, Korea, or fighting the, the Japanese in World War II. 
Uh, this day was established by a proclamation from U.S. President Jimmy Carter in 1979. And then in 1997, President Clinton signed into law that requires all federal buildings to fly the POW MIA flag today on this, the third Friday in September. 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history in Lower Manhattan in Wall Street, 102 years ago today, right outside the J.P. Morgan building, September 16th, a bomb in a horse wagon exploded. 40 people were killed, and I mean really killed. Some of them were completely obliterated where they couldn't even identify the bodies anymore. 400 people were injured at the time. It was the deadliest act of terrorism on American soil. That, of course, has since been surpassed. But 40 dead, 400 injured. They never solved the crime. Investigators and historians believe it was Italian anarchists who actually did it. There was a lot of social unrest after World War I. Labor struggles, capitalism was under attack. Nobody knows who did it, but a lot of people died in Lower Manhattan 102 years ago today. In September 16th, 1979, 43 years ago today, after planning for a year and a half, <clears throat> a couple of mistakes, a dress rehearsal that didn't go so bad, two families <clears throat> from East Germany, Peter Streitzik and Guther Wenzel, with their wives and two kids, eight of them total, escape East Germany to West Germany in a homemade balloon. They were buddies. They worked together. They planned on this for about a year and a half. They had some, some things they had to do that they thought for sure the authorities in East Germany were going to figure out. For one thing, they had to buy a ton of fabric to make the balloon. They went to a fabric store about 100 miles from their home so the folks locally wouldn't say, hey, how come you're buying so much fabric? They bought about $700 of the fabric to make the, the balloon itself. They lied. They said, we're part of a sailing club. We're going to make sails. They got four tanks of propane. They took off. They made it barely amazing. They made a couple of movies out of it, by the way. Disney did. But they made it out on this date 43 years ago. Today, some birthdays. The King of the Blues, Riley B.B. King. Born in this date in 1925, we lost him 10 years ago at the age of 89, inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in 1980, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987, Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2006 for a lot of basic people. He introduced blues to the masses in many respects. He was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson a bunch of times. Frank Sinatra got him gigs in Las Vegas when Las Vegas wouldn't book black acts. B.B. King, the legend, born in the state in 1925. Peter Falk, born in the state in 1927, died of Alzheimer's disease in 2011 at the age of 83. Of course, will always be known as Lieutenant Columbo, both in the original 70s series on NBC and then the reboot in the 90s on ABC. Peter Falk was the first actor to be nominated for an Academy Award and an Emmy Award in the same year, and he did it twice in 1962 and 1963. And towards the end of, Peter, of the original run of uh, Columbo on NBC, for the last two years, Peter Falk was paid $250,000 an episode. He was the highest paid television actor of the 1970s. That's impressive. And Amy Poehler, 51 years old today. Happy birthday, Amy. Of course, she burst on the scene with uh, Saturday Night Live and then Parks and Rec. She is 51 years old today and still funny. 29 minutes after the hour, an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, a brand new one. You're gonna, it's gonna make you think. Mike has a tendency to do that. And then in case you missed it earlier in the week on Monday, we're gonna re-air the interview I did with Bill Eagle, the interim superintendent of the Wenatchee School District. It's coming up as well. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Yahoo, Wenatchee Valley. Collins is having a BOGO sale beginning September 6th through September 15th. Here is how it works. Buy one red tag item and get the second red tag item of lesser value for free. That's right. Buy one, get one free. We have sundresses, shorts, tees, capris, etc. Fall is on its way and Collins is ready with beautiful tops, sweaters, jackets, and jeans. Fabulous boots and shoes from Soft, Fly, and Jambu. Exceptional service at Collins in downtown Wenatchee.
Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. Hey, Wenatchee Valley, this is Ben Griffin. I'm here with my friend, Eddie the Yeti. He wants to share some big news. Arctic Refrigeration is now employee-owned and has a new name, Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration. I want you to remember this summer, when you're hot and sweaty, call the Eddie. No, it's called the Yeti, Y-E-T-I, not called the Eddie. Whatever. We are a factory-authorized Bryant dealer, whatever it takes. Give us a call at Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration at 509-662-5911. Are you caught in a conflict with a family member, in the workplace, or with a neighbor or business? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on topics like conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us at 509-888-0957 or www.wvdrc.org to learn more. Monday, Monday, Mondays are happy hour all day long at Bob's Burgers and Brew in East Wenatchee. Great deals on appetizers, martinis, specialty drinks, wine, well drinks, and draft beers. Bob's Burgers and Brew in East Wenatchee. Come on in. They look forward to serving you. The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today. Mike, Mad Dog, Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, advertisers, let me tell you this. If you start your radio ad with some fast-talking auction-type guy giving the required legal disclaimer at the beginning of the ad instead of at the end, what I hear is, is we got something to hide. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. A radio ad that starts with, use of this product may cause a dirty heart burn, and suddenly death, and that goes on the slower voice that tells you how great their product is. Now, I ain't buying it. No how, no way. If you start your ad with some fast-talking guy with the legal disclaimer at the beginning, I don't think so. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Hydrofest September 24th and 25th on Lake Chelan. American Power Boat Association racing teams will be competing to take home the title. 11 classes of inboard hydroplanes, flat bottoms, vintage hydroplanes, tunnel boats, and junior outboard hydroplanes will be out to tear up the water. Admission is free. Presented by Seattle Inboard Racing Association, Wine Girl Wines, and New Horizons Real Estate. And presented by the Manson Chamber of Commerce. Campfire North Central Washington, serving youth ages 3 to 18. Register today in one of Campfire's programs. Club members meet regularly with volunteer leaders to learn responsibility, sharing, cooperation, and citizenship. When a child is involved in Campfire, they will be actively learning and engaged in activities, encouraged to learn new skills, feel a part of the group, learn to work in a team setting, participate in planning, goal setting, and making lasting memories.
Welcome back to the program. I am Dan Koontz, of course, alongside Bill Eagle, the interim superintendent of the Wenatchee School District. The school district found themselves in a bit of a pickle uh, back in April towards the end of the school year when uh, Paul Gordon, the superintendent, um, decided to move back to the Midwest, to Illinois, to take a job there. And uh, the job of superintendent is not the kind of thing you just put in the newspaper and take resumes <laughs> and be done with it. It doesn't work that way. And so the uh, Wenatchee School District reached out to the North Central Educational Services District and said, can we contract out with you folks for a year so we can keep the ball rolling? And Bill Eagle landed in the center chair. So first of all, thanks for taking some time out and visiting with me, Bill. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. It's good to be here. Um, a little bit of background on you. A teacher for quite some time, and then you kind of transitioned into administration. Uh, just a quick little professional resume, if you don't mind, to get us going. Uh, absolutely. So I was a teacher here at Wenatchee High School uh, for a number of years uh, and then transitioned into actually an instructional coach role where I was part-time teaching at the high school. And from that, I moved into administration. I moved down to the middle school um, and I was the assistant principal at Orchard Middle School for about eight years. And from there, I, I went down to the elementary level uh, where I was the principal at Columbia Elementary for a number of years and I spent uh, two years at the district office doing state and federal programs before moving to the ESD. And for a lot of um, teachers and educators, that's a pretty big umbrella. Most of them, they find their niche. You know, I'm going to be an eighth grade Washington State history teacher or whatever, <laughs> and that's the lane that they stay in high school, middle school, and elementary school. You've seen it all in that, in that it was obviously you're pretty well-rounded in that respect. Uh, yes, I, it's been a, a, a great aspect of my career to see the different levels. Um, you know, I, I, I taught uh, ninth graders through 12th graders while I was at Wenatchee High School. Um, and when you're an administrator, you're often the, the uh, favorite sub when there's a sub shortage. So uh, over my time at Orchard Middle School and and uh, Columbia Elementary, I ended up in classrooms at all the grade levels, including kindergarten, which was <laughs> when you're out most and, interesting. When you're out and about at Safeway or Albertsons or out to dinner with the family, it's Mr. Eagle. Do, they, do the kids still come up and remember you? Uh, absolutely, times? yes. Uh, in fact, uh, when the district had their opening activities, I was able to visit uh, many of the buildings in the evenings when they had events for parents. And it was fun to see some of my former students who now have um, students of their own in the district. Uh, and I, I still run into families uh, from Orchard Middle School. And the other day I was at Wenatchee High School and ran into some of my former Columbia Elementary students that are seniors here this year. And that's a good feeling, isn't it? I mean, I, I have educators in my family, um, and they say there's nothing like that. When, yeah. when you know that, hey, I'm a, even though I haven't had this kid in my class in 20 years, they still remember me and they still appreciate what I did for them. Absolutely, and, and one of the great things uh, for me about that is to see some of my former students now teachers uh, in the district in classrooms. Uh, and I've had that opportunity a, a few times in my career um, where students of mine have come back to the district and are now teaching or working as paraeducators in the district, and that has been a wonderful experience to see. Paul Gordon stepping aside pretty quick. I'm going to be gone here in just a couple of months. Um, the uh, the school board reached out to the North Central Educational Services District, gave Michelle a call, said, "Hey, we got we got a problem here. Um, can you send somebody our way for a year? Talk me through that process." Was was did Michelle just say, "Bill, you're it. Can you do it?" How did that happen? Uh, well, work? so Michelle was part of a committee uh, that uh, was working with the board to come up with some options, and one of the options was uh, to have the ESD provide. Uh, an interim through contracted services and the ESD has done superintendent services before in fact we're engaged with a few other districts besides Wenatchee at this point um, the Rondo superintendent is is currently one of our employees we've done Palisades, Stahican uh, but we had never done a district of the size of Wenatchee uh, for superintendent services and when Michelle uh, decided to throw that in as an option. Uh, she talked to a group of us at the ESD who are certified for, for superintendent work and let us know that she wanted to throw the option on the table. Um, and then when it became a, a potential way that the board might go, um, she had a discussion with me because I had 25 years of experience in the district. And I was excited to come and and it uh, feels like being back home a little bit and, and uh, serve here again. So it wasn't a, a terribly difficult decision professionally wise to, to go ahead and take it on? 
No, I was excited about the opportunity. I love the Wenatchee community uh, and I, the, the school district here has a special place in my heart. It's a special place and I was excited to come back. And right out of the box, you inherited, well, some issues, uh, <laughs> some, well, most of them unanticipated as issues have a tendency to be, first of all, uh, the budget. You went to, looked through the budget and you went, oh, geez, we moved some money forward for this school year that we weren't really supposed to do. And yeah. you realize that you were making some budgetary decisions without getting the full picture. Yeah, so it, that story kind of starts last spring before I came on board. Um, there was uh, an error in a revenue source. It was a source uh, in, in some of the CARES funding that was carried forward as a revenue, uh, and it should not have been carried forward. And it gave our budget the appearance <laughs> that we were in a stronger position. And so some hiring decisions were made that probably would not have been made otherwise uh, in compounds, you know, where we're at with our decreasing in enrollment. So one of my jobs this year is going to be to look carefully at where we're at with the budget um, and try and get our staffing in, aligned with our decrease in enrollment. And we're projecting some continued decreases in enrollment due to you know, the opening of Pinnacles Prep uh, and they're continuing to add grade levels. Um, and we've seen a decline since the Alcoa closure back in 2015. It's been a pretty steady decline. So we need to get our staffing levels back in line with enrollment. And a lot of people are moving to the Wenatchee Valley, but, uh, but studies have shown either the people who are living here who are working professionals who are able to bear children are just having less kids. That's a fact, number one. And number two, a lot of the people who are moving here are retirees who don't have kids anymore. So that's going to kind of continue in that direction for a while. It is could it not? potentially. Um, one of the things we do to predict our future enrollment is look at birth rates in the in the city and the county. And both both the county and the city have had um, decreasing birth rates over time. And that has been a pretty consistent predictor of kindergarten levels. Um, it's ne it's never perfect. Uh, but uh, kindergarten's that one that's difficult to predict because we're not just rolling numbers up. Uh, so we use the birth rates and we have seen a decline. And when you have younger kids uh, and you're a working professional, you're perhaps more apt to move uh, career-wise to a different location or a different community when the kids are younger as opposed to when they start getting into junior high and high school. You might not think, well, we're here now, this is our home, and we're not gonna move. Yeah, there's some potential for that. Uh, and we see currently our largest classes are in the high school level. And, and as, as those classes move out, um, that will impact our enrollment as well. Because coming underneath, the classes have not been as large. Being an interim superintendent, are, you, are your hands somewhat tied for long-term decisions and long-term planning in, in that respect? Um, no. Um, as an interim, you have full authority as, uh, as if you were the regular superintendent. And, you know, I, there's a 10% there's a chance I will throw my name in the hat. Uh, I'm enjoying my time here, and, and certainly I, I've enjoyed my time at the ESD as well. Um, but, again, I have a heart for the district, and so I'm considering throwing my name in the hat. Um, but in the meantime, I, I have the full authority of the regular superintendency. and, and uh, it's been great to work with the board uh, on some of the things that uh, they have as initiatives to move forward. We've got a new strategic plan that I get to be involved in launching. Um, so I'm in the regular seat, I guess, for at least a year. Well, you already answered my next question, you know, of, are you gonna consider throwing your hat into the ring? And apparently it's, it's out there, the chance is there. Yes, so, yeah. So. And you have uh, the administrative staff at the Wenatchee School District, I know a lot of them. You got some good folks there. The, the, the people who you work with on an everyday basis are some top flight pros in their profession. Absolutely. I, I have been very impressed with our cabinet team. Uh, and when I came on board, I knew the players, uh, but they were in different positions than when I was in the district four years ago. And so to see the strengths of my cabinet team has been great, uh, learning how they can support me and the board and the roles moving forward. And our principals uh, do an excellent job. We brought some new principals on board this year. We've got Lance Young. He's new at Sunny Slope. Uh, Maria Avila is our new principal at Lewis and Clark Elementary. Um, we have a new principal at Pioneer, Jacqueline Esteban. Um, very impressive uh, uh, folks, and, and they do great work with kids and, and the staff. The, um, the Wenatchee School District, overall, from an infrastructure standpoint, is doing pretty good. But as you know in the news here the last couple of weeks, uh, the HVAC system here at Wenatchee <laughs> High School, and we're at the auditorium, 
it's 50 years old and it is it's not doing particularly well. It's a 50 year old heating and cooling system and you found that out real quick during the dog days of August, didn't you? Yes, we did. And it's not a new issue. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the system's old. It's part of the original install. And uh, in August, when temperatures were heating up and we were looking to get school ready, the eastern half of this building, which includes this auditorium that we're seated in now, um, was having some real issues uh, that we needed to address in order to get school up and running. Um, these issues are due to the age of the system and, and they will be ongoing issues if we don't take some action to address them. And, and one of my goals is to, to try and push a plan forward to do some replacement of the HVAC system at the high school. Um, I'm looking into uh, how to fund that uh, and, and what would be potential costs. But um, we've been good stewards of that system for a number of years, but part of good stewardship also is taking care of of uh, the overall needs and, and the time has come I think to look at some replacement for that. Uh, f back in 2017 uh, the voters of the Manassas School District were, were asked to pass a significant construction bond uh, to basically almost build a new high school, not quite, I mean the, the high school will still be here but some significant improvements to the high school that didn't make it. Uh, it passed, a majority voted yes but it didn't get to the 60 percent super majority and now it's, it's five years later and things really haven't changed I know you're kind of have a limited on what you can support or not support. Would you like to maybe see another committee form and take a run at something perhaps a little more modest and see if we can get something passed in, in that respect? Well, it'll be, that'll be part of the purview of the board moving forward. I don't think the the time would be right now with an interim in the seat, but when they have a permanent uh, person in the position, I think that's probably something that they need to, to do. Um, and. Again, moving into that situation, there are some things that I think we have a responsibility to try and take care of as, as a district um, before we get to that uh, uh, run of another bond. Um, but certainly there are larger facility issues uh, and, and needs that the district is going to have, and there's a potential we're going to have to go out for bond. Your predecessor wasn't much for sitting in his office and working. He'd, he'd, he'd like to get out and visit the schools and visit the students and stuff. I'm assuming you're in that same boat. You're not much of a sit in your office work kind of guy. You like to get out there and do things. I like to get out. In fact, this is my uh, fourth trip to Wenatchee High School this week. <laughs> uh, but I've had an opportunity to visit all of the schools um, and, and be in the buildings at the, the start of the year, uh, including Valley Academy, which uh, was flooded last spring and there's some work going on there. Uh, Wenatchee Valley College helped us out quite a bit there. Uh, we, we came to an agreement to host uh, our Valley Academy students at Wenatchee Valley College campus there. Um, but uh, I was able to visit all of the buildings and, and do like to get out and be with the kids and the staff. What's the biggest thing that's changed in education, public education, uh, in, your, in your years? What's been the, the thing that's changed the most from the time you started this profession to now? That's a good question. Uh, I think that it probably would, would be um, the raising of the standards. Um, we have a, a, a pretty robust set of standards in Washington State now, and those have been um, creeping up uh, what we have as expectations for students over the years. And I'm proud of where our staff is in identifying priority standards for students. There are so many standards, it's hard to get to all of them uh, during the course of a year. And so our staff the last few years have been working on identifying what are the key priority standards that we have to address at each grade level to keep kids moving forward. And so the progress in that work and, and the work in terms of making the teaching profession a less isolated event where teachers are working together, collaborating around lesson plans to, to share expertise uh, and, and move things forward for kids has, has been a big change and a, and a great change. I've talked to a lot of educators, a lot of administrators, um, principals on down to service staff, and they all agree with me, and I think he was, well, the kids know. The kids, you can't fool the kids. The kids know when the teachers are leaning forward and giving a damn, as opposed to the teachers who are going, I'm three years and six days from retirement. You can't <laughs> fool the kids, can you? They know. No, you can't fool kids. Uh, and that's another reason I was proud to come back to this district, because I'm, I'm highly connected with some of the staff here, I know, you know, the excellent staff that we have in the Wenatchee School District and I'm proud to put them forward with kids. 
Uh, it's, a, it's a school district that really cares about kids. We offer a, a variety of programs to meet families' needs, uh, and I'm proud of the work that we do. How do you know you're making progress, that you're, it's kind of a, it's almost an impossible, there's not a tool out there that can measure how good you're doing in, 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 in a layman's terms, but how do you know you're, you're, you're making an impact? What, is it just a gut that I'm, we're doing good and the kids are learning and the teachers are pros? How do, you, how do you measure that? Well, we have a couple of measures that we're looking at um, based around our big six outcomes. So in the new strategic plan for the district, we're really getting back to some basics. Uh, we have six outcomes that we're going to be measuring in different ways to give us some vital signs on how the district is, is progressing with our strategic plan. Those include things like um, we want our students to experience high quality instruction and so we have some measures that we'll use um, when we walk into classrooms to see if students are engaged with the lesson uh, to ensure that the priority standards for that grade level are, are being uh, uh, taught as a focus in the classroom. Um, we have some uh, outcomes that we're looking at in terms of reading on grade level. Third grade in particular is very important in, in terms of being on grade level for reading. Um, but third grade and beyond we have measures that uh, um, we're going to use multiple times during the year to gather data on where we're at with our reading pro uh, program. We want kids to be ready for algebra heading into high school. Uh, algebra has become somewhat of a gatekeeper for higher level mathematics and so we're focusing quite a bit of attention on the skills that are prerequisite to algebra and we're going to be measuring those to see how we're progressing as a system. We want kids to be on track for graduation. We know that there's a lot of research around the end of the ninth grade year being critical in predicting success in, the, in your future high school years. Um, so we want to uh, ensure that kids finish their ninth grade year with all of the credits they attempted earned. And so we have systems in place so we're tracking where, where are kids with the number of credits that they earn in ninth grade. And that's all credits, not just math, science, English. It includes their electives. Um, because again, there's this body of research that suggests if a kid earns all their credit at the end of ninth grade, they're highly likely to go on and, and graduate from high school. So, you know, we're measuring those kinds of things that will give us a, a temperature, so to speak, some vital signs on how we're doing as a system. And they're not real flashy things, but they're all research-based and relevant to what we do in the district. Bill, I'm going to let you have the last word. Um, that big, strapping, tall, handsome guy with the hat there, that's your camera. Go ahead and, and take us home with a, with a little message for whatever you want to give out there to the folks of the Wenatchee Valley and the Wenatchee School District uh, as you tackle this job. Uh, on an interim basis. Who knows, maybe full-time. Bill, I'll let, you, I'll let you take it home. It's all yours. Well, thank you. So I would just like to invite everyone to uh, become involved in some of the events that we have going with the kids this year. Um, we are excited that schools are open again, and we're excited to see students and staff and families in the community back in our facilities. But in addition to the start of the school year, we've got the kickoff of our athletic programs, uh, football, cross country, girls swimming, girls soccer. And I would love to encourage families and community members to come and cheer on the Panthers as uh, they start their fall season here. We are seated in the Wenatchee High School Auditorium just outside the bustle of the hallways in Wenatchee. And uh, this facility will be the host of uh, our traditional fall district musical, SpongeBob. And if you've not attended a, a high school production here in the, this auditorium, I would encourage you to come out and do so. It's, it's a, a, usually a great show, and I'm sure it will be again this year. We also have students involved in Chelan County Fair activities this week, uh, so I hope you will go and see some of the, the animals that our students are, are hosting and the, the other things that uh, students from our district present at the fair. Um, I'm hoping we'll, we get some blue ribbons and, and, and things at the fair. So please come out, get involved in some of the things we have going on with kids, visit our facilities. Uh, we are happy to have the community and the families involved. In fact, we should probably close with that. And a friendly reminder, it doesn't matter whether you have a kid in the system or not, this is your school district and everybody has a dog in this hunt. Yes. Um, you're getting something out of this, whether, whether you, you go here or a part of it or not. It's, 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 it's a part of the community yeah. and a critical part of the community. Absolutely. So, Bill, thanks for taking some time out from your busy day and visiting with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank All you. Right. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley and we're going to be right back.
Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge in Leavenworth has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and dine with beautiful views of the mountains. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Call Crystal's to reserve their event space. Whether your event is grand, intimate, or casual, Crystal's provides unforgettable food and superb service. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, proud to be serving fabulous food and drinks. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample, and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. Hi, I'm Jim Heinlein, independent agent and owner at Springwater Insurance Group here in North Central Washington. And it's that time of year again, October 15th to December 7th, that is the time if you have a Medicare plan, do I wanna keep it or do I wanna change it? For any of those questions, give us a call at Springwater Insurance Group because we're independent agents. We don't work with one company, we work with many companies because all of you have different situations and needs. So if you have questions about 2021 Medicare plans, give us a call, 888-2600. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled out the new line of custom e-bikes. They have three-way adjustable folding e-bikes and full-size mountain e-bikes. Pedal assist and a throttle makes them a perfect fit for any rider. Green Motion e-bikes located in the Mills Brothers building. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel. All right, about two minutes left in this program before we send you on your way to get your weekend going. Programming and reminder, we got sports tonight. We got sports tomorrow. We got the Bridges Sportsmanship Game. Eastmont will host the Bonanche Panthers. We'll take to the air at 6.30. With a kickoff at 7 o'clock, Eric Granstrom and Paul Collard on the call. Looking forward to that. And then tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we will have Eastmont Soccer, Girls Soccer. They'll be hosting Moses Lake, Sebastian Moraga. On the call there, we'll take to the air at about 10 minutes to 1, and they'll begin that soccer match on the pitch in East Wenatchee at 1 o'clock sharp. How about some good news? Air quality is back to good for the first time in a very long time. What, it's been five, six days of pretty bad air times, uh, a couple of times getting near hazardous for the Wenatchee Valley. Looks like we're through that. We're at 50 on the AQI scale. That means the uh, the air quality is good, although it's still moderate in both cashmere in Leavenworth, but with the winds that are in the forecast for this afternoon and tonight, that's going to, whatever smoke is left in the sky is going to get scoured out a little bit. There's a pretty robust cool front going to come in, and it's going to feel a lot like autumn, especially tonight and most of Saturday. We're going to have a big cool down, and we're going to gradually warm back up on Saturday and eventually on Sunday. But let's talk about the winds today. It's going to be quite breezy at times. Uh, again, the strongest winds will probably be between about 4 o'clock to about 8 o'clock today, which is right around sunset. Sunset tonight is a little little past 7 o'clock. Days are getting shorter, too, by the way, you notice that. Uh, wind speeds, sustained winds, about 10 to 20 miles an hour. Stronger gusts at times in the Wenatchee area, especially those exposed areas that are prone to stronger winds. And the Waterville Plateau, again, is exposed, so it has the tendency to get the brunt of Mother Nature when she decides to kick up the wind. So anywhere between breezy and windy, really, depending on where you are at. In the meantime, your forecast, sunshine today, yeah, very little smoke, especially as the day progresses. We'll get up to 72 degrees here in the Wenatchee Valley. We're at 55 right now, 48 for the overnight low. Overnight lows in the 40s. Yeah, it's going to be cool. And as I mentioned before, this is a cold front, so we're going to have some pretty cold air settling down to the valley. It's not going to warm up a great deal, only 67 for the afternoon high on Saturday. Our normal high is 77. Warmer still on Sunday. And then we're into a very mild start to say goodbye to summer and welcome autumn by the middle of next week. And that's it for us. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.